streaming is going, and then I will return the host duties to you. But um, return it to Julia. Sure? Yeah. Are what, we sure Julia? streaming is actually working? Uh, yeah. Because uh, in Safari, which has always worked, so at least worked for streaming, it says the media cannot be viewed. Um, we had a couple problems with a, like two sessions yesterday, um, but I'm double checking. Yeah, apparently one other session didn't get recorded. Um, diversity inclusion, but. And I'm frozen on checking credentials. Yay. There we go. Okay. Okay. Streaming is. Streaming's working. Yep. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. And Julia, if you want the session recorded separately, um, you can hit the record button down at the bottom as the host and just ping me afterwards and I can share it with you. Oh, interesting. Okay. I, I think people are thinking that because it was being streamed that it would automatically be recorded. We um, do, we do have them. I'm just, if you want an additional one, it'll record the chat and things like that as well. Ah, okay. All right. Thanks everybody. Thank you. Good morning. It is our operator feedback session. Should we go ahead and get started? Let's. Excellent. Unfortunately, I see two operators. So operators should click the uh, take the virtual mic and participate button and join now. Just out of curiosity, um, how was the the, like the Zoom link communicated because I couldn't find it. So it so the Zoom link only becomes available at uh, the exact time when the session is supposed to start. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. We have someone's iPhone here. Sweet. Um. I'd love more operators. I know people use our software. <laughs> I know our software's getting used on like every telecom on the planet at this point. It's just perfect. So nobody needs to discuss anything. This reminds me of the operator sessions in Shanghai. Your complaints, I know everybody was like, silence. <laughs> 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 it was like that. <laughs> I think it was after we excluded the sync with Nova. <laughs> okay, we got a couple more people appearing. So I guess um, Etherpad. Where's Etherpad link? Here's Etherpad link. Okay, Etherpad link is in the chat in Zoom. Um, and is also in the page. So go ahead and add myself. So I guess, um, does anyone want to share what has worked well? Is this going to be a repeat of Shanghai? <laughs> Either silence means everything or nothing. How we are going to know? <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm curious. How many people here are operators versus upstream contributors? I mean, that's a great question. Maybe people, think... maybe people that are operators can introduce themselves and talk about how they use ironic. Yeah, I agree. Or, or use the uh, the Zoom uh, raise hand capability in the participants list. 
and everyone should be able to unmute themselves and join the conversation. I think part of the problem is a lot of people may not realize to join Zoom, to actually join the conversation, I have to click the link on the page below the streaming video. Which makes it a little more difficult to get to. Looks like they had someone, someone else join. So maybe, uh, someone's got operator acceptance. So it seems like people are using ironic, yay. Um, what does not work well is someone put user acceptance. Um, does anyone want to share that thought? Well, both of this was me, so. I don't know if oh. you want to like turn, turn this into a like on a therapy session once more, but. <laughs> uh, do, do we need to schedule a separate Arnie therapy session? <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe. Okay. Should we bring no, 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 Yeah, what, what I tried to say about this is like, uh, like for, for the people operating the infrastructure, like preparing hardware, handing out hardware, dealing with retirement, the acceptance is good. Maybe I just scare them. That's also possible, but. The acceptance is good. It's like integrated with various tools and like workflows. So there the acceptance is high. Um, like, I mean, as I like outline in, in, in talks, we use this for, for benchmarking or for burn-in or for like health checking, for retirement, for the handing, handing out resources to users. What does not well work that well is that the users accept this way of how we do this. I mean, it's not necessarily an issue with ironic or ironic concept solve. It's it's just share to share the experience because users are, for users this is kind of an additional layer between them and the hardware, like something where they lose a little bit of control. Because our use cases may be different from others. It's not like we have a like use you know like a big cloud and people come and go with their physical instances. It's more like a an abstraction layer that allows us to do proper accounting. It allows us to have proper workflows, um, to retire nodes properly, to move nodes from one user to another. Um, but for some users, they just basically order hardware. It arrives with us. It has to go to, an, to Ironic, and they have go, to go to Ironic or Nova, in that case, or OpenStack in order to get it. Um, so for them, it's just an additional layer. So, so the, the main thing I'm struggling with is like um, having users accept this as as a layer especially if something goes wrong like i don't know um they try to create an instance it fails node goes into clean failed um they retry they get no valid host they can't do anything they have to open a ticket and ask what's wrong with my machine while if they had like full control they they would like probably figure out themselves so again it's now, not necessarily something that ironic can can solve for me it's just something that i struggle with like now, to sell, uh, this, I guess sell this to users while on the other side like everyone like on the hardware side that has to do all the acceptance, burn in and so on, it's it's much easier because I provide them with a framework where they can just hook in the various things they wanna do into the clean, cleaning framework, for instance. And um, yeah, they, they are happy about someone else taking care of this rather than maintaining um, their own tools in order to do the burn in or something. And also to use the same tool for everything. So that's kind of the like difference between behind the scenes and like the user facing part. So I guess a question that uh, comes to mind is, is there anything that could be done to, well, I guess two questions. One, have you considered uh, granting users API access directly to Ironic? I'm taking the look as no, <laughs> uh, yeah. but maybe something to explore moving forward since the there's been improved support for the, those kind of functions. Right. They may the great, find. Yeah. The, the question they may is find, like, Sorry. Oh, I was going to say they may find using not using it for some things, using Nova for some things, as an easier interaction. Granted, you lose the accounting that comes out of Nova. Mm -hmm. It can be read only just for debugging. This is true. Uh, provide information at least. Um, 
you said that the users are happy, kind of happy that they're using like the same tooling and the uh, things, a lot of things are taken care of for them. Um, yeah. I mean, and it, uh, sorry. Yeah, it I'm really, kind it of wondering it. <laughs> I shut up. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm kind of wondering if, if there's any alternative means that they could get to, to claim the hardware and then enable use of another tool they're more comfortable with for provisioning. Mm -hmm. um, maybe that's a path we could enable yeah. somehow. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, even like read only access or something, if they see a node is in clean failed, that doesn't help them very much, right? At least they have some details on what yeah. is going on and maybe they see last error, maybe to make some sense to them. Yeah. Yeah. At least it they would... won't just come to you saying, oh, something happens, I cannot find anything where they yeah, will yeah. have. Okay, I have node and clean failed with this error message. It will save you time. It will save them some frustration from not understanding what's going on. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, that, an option. That should be an option that's available today uh, on train, right? You're running train? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, the other thing so, that this, the other way that this could be done is like we, we anyway have like, for instance, for repairs, we have like a repair team that's like dealing with hardware. They also interact with Ironic um, and they go through some system that we have um, in order, for instance, to set without admin credentials to set maintenance on nodes so that it doesn't um, appear in Nova as available resource. Uh, so basically what they have is like a, a tool that they can, or a, a yeah, a tool that they can use in order to perform certain actions on Ironic and Ironic hosts when they need to intervene without giving them full admin credentials. Something similar could be done for users, right? They could go, go somewhere and say like, okay, query my host, what's wrong with it? Uh, trigger, I don't know, a re-cleaning or something that's in clean failed and only if that fails, like open a ticket or something like this. Uh, so Min did go through the, and basically granted so that potentially in certain cases, if the data is there and present, that users could have implied rights and against the API if they're, they own a machine mm -hmm. or they're using machine, but the kind of the whole ownership use model in your environment needs to be established. Right. Yeah, exactly. And is it, you know, I don't is, think we're, go ahead. No, this is the other thing because when they don't have an instance, it's not their machine, right? Yeah, so. exactly. So well, this is why not, this is why not, this like I, I was thinking about this multi-tenancy thing at some point where basically we have a like strong correlation between physical nodes and and the tenant even if there are no instances. So that's not necessarily true because the owner field is intended for just that, mm -hmm. and that uh, it lives longer than the, the actual uh, leasey field. I think that's what it's called. Right. Le le the, le the field indicating who you're leasing to is, should be the actual uh, user. Um, the owner is who has the powers of uh, Cthulhu to do whatever they want to do the machine. So when they, they feel angry and want to destroy the universe, they can. And that to was actually a, sorry, go ahead. To be a bit more precise, it depends on how you set it up. True, true. It's. Uh, it all depends on the policy you set forth because the default policy doesn't allow this because we want to be most restrictive by default. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the but other, it can be named. Go ahead. The, 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 the other issue that this could solve is this like, like recurring issues that I'm raising since, since the beginning is that users have no idea what kind of resources they can use. They need to be told. Mm -hmm. And if they lose this information, they have no idea. So, um, I, I know also this is not like an ironic issue per se, but we have projects that have access to, I don't know, 30 or 40 different flavors. And if they don't instantiate their machines right away, they have no idea how many of which they can, they can still instantiate. So if there was some ownership where they could basically query and say like, okay, show me all my machines that are like available, not instantiated yet, that would at least help them because otherwise I have to resort to things like I have to, I don't know, keep project metadata in sync and like 
say, okay, you have 20 of these and 30 of these, check and then like see how many instances you have and do the delta or something like this. Um, I, so I, I, think, I think some of the more advanced fields that we've added in the past are exactly what you need. Um, that way you can correlate and track and figure out who, what, where, how, and why. Um, what we may be missing is a tiny like mechanism here or there to record some data and wipe out some data. Which field is that? What was that? Which field is that? You said there's a field oh, added? The owner field. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so that could be an option. Uh, I'm not, sh I don't think Nova touches just... that field. Uh, All right. The least Nova key field could be useful. Uh, and I also don't remember if the Nova client touches that field. But yeah. those two fields could be, no? OK. It, this With would the be... policy file, it would be useful. You could actually then track that and mm -hmm. at least correlate it and right. get the I mean, this, was, this would probably be good enough, because what I could do is like the moment I have these 100 nodes for a specific project, I could make the project name or whatever. OK, if then you rename projects, then I have another problem. But let's assume the project name at least is, is like constant. I could put this there and then have something in, in this tool that I mentioned. Um, where they could escalate their privileges in order to get a list of all nodes that they are owner of with the flavor and what with the provisioning state, for instance. And this way they could get an overview. See what I mean? So basically they would have a list of okay, 100 nodes, 50 have been instantiated, all hundred belong to this project, 50 have been instantiated. So I should be able to uh, do 50 more. Oh no, it's only 40 because 10 are in clean fade or something like this. Gives them some. But they could also like then query uh, ironic directly, yeah. The question is whether this make, will like help with the with the original problem that they just perceived this as an additional layer. Now they have to like talk to some other API in order to find out what they actually have. So I'm not sure. I mean, they wouldn't be less. It would be less opaque for them, so they could actually see. But I'm not sure if this like helps with the overall acceptance. But okay, there's other reasons why we have this, not necessarily user convenience. Okay, but I will have a look at the owner field. That's a good good pointer. Thanks. Speaking of lack of flavor clarity, um, I know we've kind of said that really needs to be Nova discussion. I know that there has been some discussion in Nova regarding that in the past. Oh, looks like uh, John, John mentioned not managed to finish that yet, but getting closer, I hope. So I guess there's light on the horizon for that. I think part, so. part of the unified. Hey, how's it going? Hey, not too bad. Um, not too bad. I just had a cupcake, so I'm feeling better now. Um, Excellent. <laughs> so I'm feeling very positive now because I'm full of sugar. Um, no, I think we have got funding that I'm hoping means I can go back and work on that. We've got a lot of agreement on unified limits. The basic idea is that anything that in pl is in placement, you can have a quota on it when you're starting the instance. So a custom resource class being a good example of that. Um, whether we implement it first pass through like that is still under discussion, but certainly it's heading that way. It, but the main, the main, okay, the main, or every time this comes up, I raise the point that users have no idea what a resource class is, right? Or a resource. Well, product, the users don't see it though. It, it depends sorry? what you mean here. No, in order to solve the problem, if we say like this quota on resource classes, how, how, how is that exposed to users? What do users see? Yeah, that's fine. They see crazy probably, resource classes. Well, maybe it's baby steps. First have it implemented and then provide an API. There, there, there is a, I mean, it, one of the big open questions is how do we actually expose that properly? Because we keep umming and ahhing about whether we should just expose, you know, like whether you should expose placement, a placement API that could tell you that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You because you know it. what I would like, I mean, in in an ideal world, is something very similar to what um, Cinder or Manila do, where you have like per type quotas, and the user can actually see how many of this type can I still create, how much space do I still have of this specific share type or volume type, right? I, I was thinking the exact same thing. Um, what has always been useful for me is to be able to load a page or load something and go, oh, I can create ten more instances but I need to recreate 20, uh-oh. And that way I know, that way I'm not 
hitting something in advance. That way I can plan and act accordingly. The, so some, some sort of API would be useful on placement. What, what I always kept thinking about is, um, again, lunch, but uh, pizza slicing, because in the Nova world, obviously things are more divisible. So usually what you kind of want to say is you can have four slices. You know, you could have two, you can have four, four slices individually or one big pizza of four slices. Um, which is why we always get down a rat hole with the flavor per flavor thing. So the, the unified limits, and I guess, um, I'm guessing I'm saying plus one to the baby steps, right? If we get to that point, we could, uh, um, without trying to make this up on the fly, right? I have wondered if we should have on those resource classes like descriptions, if there's a better, a better way of exposing that to the end user. Um, but maybe in the end, it's up to. Um, there's something in Nova that you should be able to say, given your quota, how many of this flavor can you have? Right, that's a reasonable question to ask. Um, it's a reasonable question to ask something, not necessarily a Nova API, some client. You should be able to make that call, right, programmatically. Um, exactly. Would that help? It, it, it would help tremendously. And if you think about it, users could actually have their monitoring systems also monitor that. And if the number suddenly changes unexpectedly, then that could be an alarm. And that could be, mean they've been compromised or someone's doing something they shouldn't. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. Yeah, it's a useful thing to monitor, isn't it? Very useful. Um, it, it, the current plan is to put this on the client side, just because we can't agree who the hell should own it. <laughs> um, but again, it's baby steps. Like if we can prove that these four things need to happen for this answer to come out, then we can talk about who should own that API. Um, I think in this case it's Nova, but I don't think we want to own it. So, you know, <laughs> if we create the client, we can create the use case and decide whether it's a good idea or not. It, it, it's the whole proxy API thing. It's just a nightmare on the server side. What are your thoughts in, in terms of when this might actually appear? Like, do you think it'd be Wallaby or Zed or beyond? I always keep saying the next release and it never happens. Um, I, I generally do hope it would be Wallaby, but. Okay, but don't count on it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we have something Every hacked. We've had it hacked and I want it, you know, we're still on Okada and I want to upgrade and change how we do quotas, but it sounds like it's not available. So we're going to have to keep our hack. Yeah. I think that would be a fair way to, a fair summary of the current state. Um, the, the honesty, honesty of the situation is that we do keep when we get into review and get into the detail, we do keep uncovering things that are complete landmines. Um, I'm kind of hopeful we've got most of them now, but I was at the beginning, right? So. That's just an honest take on where we're at. Yeah, no, that's, it's good to know. Let's be realistic about it as opposed to too hopeful. Yeah, I, I'm in it. The plan is that it would go in an experimental phase as kind of as an alternative quota driver. So you'd opt out of DB quotas and opt into unified limits. The bit that's probably the messiest is the transition tooling around that, just because making that work with, uh, you know, uh, whatever you call the upgrades that don't do all the steps, but do. Um, <laughs> yeah, just making it work with all that's a bit tricky. So we, of course, we have limited time. We should probably move on to uh, next topic. Um, any ambitious features anyone would like to see? Someone has suggested Foreman co slash cobbler as a backend. I'm sorry, Julia. Um, Let me interrupt you for a second, please. Um, I'm right. sure we asked everyone here in the chat that they had a chance to talk about their pain points. We been asking for a while and I, I can maybe raise one that is actually both topics which is Snapchat. okay <laughs> so speaking of snapshots there uh, is a spec that was written by Kai Feng um, 
it's up in review. In ironic specs, we urgently need to review it and provide feedback. Um, and I think that would help. And at least it's a first step forward, just like rate support, we have to make an initial step forward. Um, it's a little bit more nebulous and also kind of risky because if we're going to try and capture everything that could be attached, that could be quite a bit. <laughs> and of course we lose memory state and all that, unless, unless we've got a micro hypervisor to talk to. I mean, so in terms of like parity with a VM, uh, the VMs wouldn't capture the ephemeral disks. Now, that's a thornier problem in Ironic, to be fair. But yeah. Can, can Ironic actually deploy on disks that are not labeled as the root disk? Can you deploy? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm trying to see why, why would the snapshot operation captures all the disks if the deploy operation actually just uses one disk, which is the root disk? Well, I, I think right now it would use what, what it, what's determined to be the root disk, or it appears to be the root disk. Um, but if we were to expand that out to be all, all storage disks that may be attached, then it becomes a much thornier problem, as John was kind of pointing out. Especially if, if you have a node with 100 terabytes of storage locally, and then all of a sudden you're having to load, upload 100 terabytes worth of data into a cloud and compress yeah. that, it could take a very long time. Yeah, or one, one petabyte. Please don't, no. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> I'm afraid. I mean, same problem with VMs, but um, <laughs> the only other thing I was going to say is that the whole, um, from a Nova API perspective, it's not meant to reboot. <laughs> and I, I guess it has yeah, to, the, right? If it's the general case. Yeah, and I think maybe what the, what we could potentially do is make it an opt-in only feature. And if it's not explicitly enabled, that way the operator basic, at least the operator can go, well, <laughs> or we could make it such that you try it once on Nova, it fails, horribly returning an error message and second time will work or something along those lines. It might be navigatable. <laughs> yeah, it's tricky, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it, it's because there's not a, not a full hypervisor there. Mm. It's, like, it's almost like um, I'm having evil thoughts about the shell feature now, but I'm going to shut up before I cause a problem. <laughs> it's just because shell offloaded is technically the state that you'd be in. But I, I don't think that's a, I don't think you want to do it that way. Yeah. I, it's a good point in question. Uh, I think we've reached that discussion with Nova in the past. Yeah, I can never remember what we came up with. I don't think we did, in all honesty. I think it was basically like, it should probably still be a snapshot, but basically functionality is like shelved. Yeah, Except it is. machine return comes back. Well, yeah, you've got the choice to not do that, I suppose, but yeah. True, true. It'd be weird. <laughs> I guess, uh, shall we move on to any ambitious features? Someone's proposed uh, use of form and slash cobbler as a back end. Uh, there's a little bit of discussion in the etherpad. I'm guessing by the lack of comments that maybe the group's not really interested in that. Uh, 
Okay. Was the I idea? Can... Right, I mean, why would people suggest that as the option? I, I don't know. And I, I think it's because the, the pain point is not strong enough for them to switch away from their existing tooling. And oh, okay, so it's like the fried API to existing. Thought. Yeah. Yeah, and it's it, it's the mech the mechanism workflows. There's such a dramatic difference there, in interaction. It's not really feasible. But a migration slash conversion guide would be useful, and we should write something. Anyway, next topic that's on the list is something never you never dared ask about Ironic. First, the, someone actually put, isn't it Ironic? It's called Ironic? Yes, it is, <laughs> intentionally. So this um, conquering the world thingy, when? Wait, when are, when, oh wait, wait, when are we conquering the world? When are we conquering the world? Uh, next Friday? I think it works for me. Okay. I may have some bouldering in the morning, but that's way too early for you anyway. Yeah. Um, I, it's actually kind of funny for you to mention that just because the number of, of cases for ironics being used has exploded in the last year. Um, and it's really a testament to everyone's work in this project over the years uh, by the fact that it's being leveraged and used in, what, in some ways we never expected, in some ways that are excellent and great ad adaptations and others to just kind of get the job done, so. Could I Maybe ask, have, um, go ahead. Sorry, some of the things we've did, been discussing involve Nova. And I know we've, we've talked in the past about how we have more users uh, wanting Stenal and Ironic. So how is that working out? Um, I don't really see any pain points here that are specific to standalone. Yeah, the pain points really seem to be mostly Nova-based inter interaction because I guess two, th two reasons. One, it's incredibly painful for us to add anything into Nova. Um, and that's, or at least historically, it's because the Nova team culture and the hurdles we have to jump through to get anything merged. Um, so that's one thing. And also there's that culture also tends to want to try and design a thing to be cloud-like and bare metal is just not cloud-like in many cases. So there's a point at which we kind of stopped adding things into Nova to interact with the bare metal. Also, most of the changes have been more operator focused. So I think it's probably worth revisiting and going back to. I'm just not sure what, what it will actually yield uh, in terms of fruitful results beyond the needful that can be identified, such as understanding what's in use or um, snapshot at some point. Right, that makes sense. So uh, another item, Ironic as an interface layer for multi-tenant cloud computing versus Ironic as a general purpose tool in an enterprise is it both for good? Which direction should it, should slash will it take? Towards the bottom of the ether pad. Dimitri notes he's not an operator that he thinks that we need a more consumer friendly way to use the API. Yeah, I'm trying to guess uh, what would it take to make it more friendly specific as a general purpose tool and probably an easier to use API, installing, tooling, which is something we are working on. So it's not like a new requirement just to emphasize that's still a priority. Is a simpler GUI what's actually needed? 
Maybe if we had somebody to work on existing GUI. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, all, all those things. But it, just from a, if you'd want to drive your infrastructure, as a, so lots of the customers we work with are kind of wanting to transition to, you know, infrastructure as a code and that kind of thing. So in that adopting of those different pieces, they see like they don't see that hurdle as a as a big one because they're sort of already bought into that. But for the more general use case of the just give me a thing, um, we're generally not a very friendly user interface because we've exposed quite a lot of the features. And um, there's some interesting presentations from some people at one of the UK research councils, Jasmine, like they wrote like a little shim that just does the very basic give me a VM thing with a flavor option. So that's a really good point uh, because there's a there's a disconnect in between the development community in OpenStack and the operator and user commu communities in that a lot of people do actually want to just give me a thing. Uh, but some of the developers uh, seem to want you to have to define all these options and pass all these parameters. And oh, you want the special flag that will add, you pass these extra arguments and just that's not user friendly. That's at all. I have recently been sticking several pins in my eyes when trying to do anything to do with um, like SROV, for example. I, mean, I don't mean to throw a shoe at a particular feature, but that is horrendous for, no, no, but you create the nick with all of these special properties. Um, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, my, my ears just burnt when you said SRIOV and I still have PTSD. Yeah, I can believe it. Um, it's more just as a, a backup to what Julia said, right? It's, it, can I have an orange, a banana or an apple, please? Is the kind of question that people want to be asked. Um, and that's what flavors are meant to be for, right? It's just sometimes we get lost in the weeds. But that is UX, not APIs, I should say. So I have uh, brought this up before, but um, usually get gets a, a tumbleweed in response. But um, I've used mass, mass a couple of times. Um, now, I've never actually set the thing up, so I don't know what it's like from that perspective. But um, in terms of actually using it, it's it's a lot nicer than ironic in terms of something that you point and click at. If you want something that you're, if you're a more advanced user and you want to start driving things programmatically, then yeah, ironic all the way. But for someone who wants to manage say a hundred servers or less, um, being able to do that in a web UI wins. It's just really quite easy to do. Um, I know people have had, have their own complaints about it, um, but um, yeah, what I've seen of it, it's been pretty slick. It's a really good point. Um, we we focused on a scale that is in huge, and we kind of left the enterprise out of the equation in many senses. And at that scale. If you're not doing infrastructure as code, it's a lot. It's a lot more appealing just to have point and click. Get, give me my banana, <laughs> or give me my orange or apple today. Not have to do a bunch of different work. We did have some work on an initial UI, but unfortunately, uh, that all ceased with a departure of a certain company that shall not be named. So I'm, I'm the perpetrator as that uh, Foreman Cobbler uh, question there. And Ironic tends to provide cloud APIs, which are nice for if, if, if your workloads are um, running either in virtual or bare metal, but 
in our case, we've got a significant amount of tech already sunk into things like Kickstart and um, old school bare metal provisioning. So I wonder if there's a, I mean, if it's a layer on top of, of actually on the, on the image, literally, that would be needed here. Oh, that's a different question. You, you mean you don't want to use cloud in it, basically? It's it's literally cloud in it. Cloud in it is 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 beautiful and everything, but uh, it's not something that was developed in two thousand. So, so the, you're actually raising a really good point, and there is uh, there is someone working on Kickstart support. So that could be helpful, um, like explicit support to be able to say, "Here's my Kickstart file. Go make the thing happen." Yeah, it's. I mean, I mean, a, a lot of our workflow is um, sort of encapsulated in uh, somebody hands you a or, re, uh, or uh, somebody hands you a machine that you give the Kickstart URL to, and then the machine exists afterwards. Um, Does that go in glands? I don't. What know, do you mean by I... a kickstart URL? So um, you can you can give and on um, when you boot a machine on a CentOS CD, you can give a kernel parameter with a URL and. But um, what does that URL do? Sorry. No, uh, I mean... it's, it's it's a kickstart file which is basically um, the 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 CentOS installer Anaconda. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Parses that. So that. It would be good if you could take a look at that Kickstart Anaconda driver spec to see if that would help, or if there's something missing there that that very likely that is exactly in. what I'm missing. So let me grab that from review. So you have the link. To, unless you know where to find it. So I think we're almost out of time. There is an additional um, question regarding RAID, which might be crazy, I don't know, which is layering RAID, RAID types. I know we've had a couple of people come into IRC and go, how do I do this? I want to do this. But I don't think we've had a huge demand for it. Any thoughts? I guess not. Well, any ending thoughts before we all wrap up and go to our next session? Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye -bye. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.